Well, let's get this show on the road. Um, so 1.1, uh, compare and contrast the different types of cloud models. Okay. So we're just going to take the objectives from um, CompTIA's uh, exam objectives and go through them. Okay. Um, so deployment models. Uh, and they're actually missing some here that I've seen used in the past. And they use one uh, here that, uh, yeah, is, is interesting to me. But uh, we'll go on. Uh, so cloud, uh, a public cloud. So public is cloud infrastructure that's shared. So this is the one that most people think about. Uh, AWS, Azure, Google, uh, and everyone's using cloud. Um, if you have a phone, you take a picture and it shows up on in photo somewhere, you use uh, um, an LMS, there's, there's going to be cloud integrations. Uh, I, I doubt you can find almost anyone that has a, a smartphone that's not using cloud in some way. Um, uh, a public cloud. So private cloud. <clears throat> private cloud is where the cloud infrastructure is for a single entity. So you can run cloud computing infrastructure locally. Uh, you, and that means you're in charge of the hardware, the data center. Uh, and you may even be in charge of the, the cloud itself. There's open cloud uh, software. But it may be that you have a service provider uh, managing the, the cloud pieces of it. Um, but you can run cloud locally. And that's private. Hybrid is where the users, pri they, they use a private cloud usually, and then multiple public clouds. Um, it, it just gives, well, there's a lot of reasons people might do this. Uh, bursting. So if you have a lot of uh, traffic at a certain point in time, you might not want to buy everything that you need to to manage all of that traffic. So what you do is you run some in the cloud when it's busy. Or it might be that you have different classifications or labels for your information and stuff that is private or top secret, depending on what type of organization you are. Uh, maybe you don't want to be in the cloud. Um, so it, it depends on uh, the reasons, but there's, there's a lot of reasons why you might use a hybrid model. Community, this is where multiple organizations get together and they say, hey, Let's create our own cloud infrastructure. Let's share our resources. Um, and there might be a lot of reasons that they do this. Um, so uh, a community might have specific regulations. Um, they might not be, uh, they, they may be concerned with security in the cloud and want some control still. Um, whatever the reason, they, they, there's a group that comes together. They create the cloud for their individual group. Now. I've seen this getting eroded partially because uh, the public clouds are becoming so good um, and cheap. Usually the community cloud, you can't do it at the cost savings. You get some of the cost savings, but not all uh, that you get by going to the cloud. Um, so um, the uh, what I've seen though erode this is public clouds like Amazon Web Services has a specific AWS government offering uh, to be able to uh, meet some of those concerns uh, from the regulatory. Um, so cloud within cloud. Uh, this is where you run your own cloud in a public cloud infrastructure. Uh, so this is something I, I actually hadn't really uh, heard of this term uh, before. This is more CompTIA. Um, specific, um, but it's a cloud within a cloud where you're you take the data you let the uh, a provider a cloud provider do the data center work and then you can uh, use your cloud there. A multi cloud focuses on using services from different cloud vendors. So I usually think of uh, people that really like to use containers when I think of this one. Um, uh, because uh, running containers, you can throw them up and have them run wherever uh, because it's it's a defined container. Uh, I think about a shipping container. Um, uh, you can have it on a boat. You can have it on a truck. You can just plop it at someone's house uh, or you can put it in a storage. So there's a lot of things you can do as long as your, your thing is a container. And then you can let it run wherever you'd like. 
um, you lose a lot of the benefits uh, that cloud providers have um, by going container route. Um, but uh, some people really like that. Uh, and then you can just, it, it doesn't matter what per provider you go with, your, your container will just run. Um, interesting, one that's not here is the polycloud. Now this is kind of the opposite of multi-cloud uh, in that you use the a lot of different cloud providers, but it's so that you can use the specialties that they have. Um, for example, Oracle might be better, maybe, uh, at running databases than any other cloud provider. Um, Microsoft might be better running, well, well, Oracle databases. Microsoft might be better at running my uh, MS SQL databases. Um, Amazon might be better at almost everything else. Um, so uh, you use the, in in the poly cloud, uh, you use with whatever it, whoever's doing it the best. Um, so uh, on to the last one, multi tenancy. So this is just the fact that a lot of uh, customers use the same uh, uh, hardware. Uh, so and that's one of the concerns that governments have had. Um, so there is a wiki page on uh, on these cloud models, by the way. Uh, which has all of them, I think, that we've discussed, except for cloud within the cloud. And I think uh, I think it'll have multi-tenancy there. Um, so here, you, oh, and I had it to public cloud. Um, so I will link to this uh, in the video as well. Uh, Wikipedia is usually a pretty good resource, and they link out to other resources, or you can always use uh, Google to find more. So uh, that's the first part. Let's go on to the next one. So service models. So infrastructure as a service. And while we talk about this, I'm going to open this link in a new window because um, I really like this. So uh, I see so many people mess this up and this person has done a great job at trying to simplify it. Um, and pizza as a service uh, kind of goes through uh, what, what it would look like if traditional or on-prem versus these other um, things when you look at it from a pizza point of view. So uh, this can give you a little bit of a, uh, of a um, understanding there, but even has, it goes into some of the more, um, uh, more than what is needed for this uh, CompTIA one, but the, the other cloud providers where they're at. In fact, there's, there's a lot more than this. Um, so I'll come back, I'll, I'll link to that as well. And there we go. Keep them up here so I can get the links below. But so let's talk about these. Um, traditionally, we ran everything locally. Okay, um, so infrastructure as a service just um, provided you the power, the the server, the uh, cooling and stuff, and you had to set up the OS. You had to patch it, uh, manage it, upgrade. So uh, platform as a service actually takes that to a, a step where they're managing the OS usually. Um, they're doing the patching of the OS, the upgrading of the OS. Um, there might be some things that you're touching above that, uh, but they're, they're taking care of the platform. So software as a service is just that. It's software. You're getting uh, a, a fully functioning software. So uh, for example, um, it, I've worked a lot with the ERPs. Starting out with PeopleSoft, uh, we could run PeopleSoft as in, in, in an infrastructure as a service 10 years ago. Um, uh, I, I think we could go a little higher now, but that's where we were at. Uh, Workday came along and Workday is a software as a service. So uh, with PeopleSoft, we had to install all the applications. We had to manage all the applications. We had to patch all the applications. Software as a service with Workday um, there's nothing from a system administrator's standpoint that we really do other than the integrations that go in and out of it. Um, so it's all the functional users that are setting it up. Um, and this is usually software as a service is usually a safer way to go because, um, the company usually understands how to run its stuff securely better than, um, the clients that are using it. Um, 
some uh, extra ones that aren't listed here. So this is where we go down into this pizza as a service too. Um, containers as a service. We talked a little bit about containers um, in the prior slide. Um, if you don't know what a container is, it would be good to, to look that up. Um, but containers as a service um, is something AWS has. Um, some uh, I, I'm pretty sure most of the big cloud providers have something along those lines. And functions as a service. Uh, functions as a service in AWS are lambdas. Um, and they're really cool because uh, when you're getting to this level, you can just write code and your code will run. You don't have to worry about installing the program to run your code. It's installed already. It, you don't have to worry about the OS. You don't have to worry about any. any. It's just, it, it's cool. Um, so these are the service models, um, which kind of goes into the next part. Um, so uh, the shared responsibility models is kind of what I was thinking. So let's look at that first. We're going to look at this uh, one backwards. Um, so the shared responsibility model, it depends on what you're running, what is under your control, what you're supposed to manage. I mean, we're always managing your data uh, or what's under AWS's goal, the uh, job, which is the hardware, the infrastructure, the data centers, and so, so the software in some uh, instances, right? Um, so when we get uh, here, uh, there's these three other points that we need to talk about. Okay, so Internet of Things. Uh, Internet of Things is where um, you have just all these different devices like Alexa, Google Home, uh, the home automation stuff. Uh, I mean, I have smart plugs, my garage door openers uh, are, are li linked, uh, power panels, fridge, microwave, laundry machines. Uh, you can even have, I, I don't have a smart thermostat. I mean, I live in Hawaii. We don't really have thermostats in our house. Well, kind of. Um, not uh, home-based ones. So uh, you, you might have an AC that would have a thermostat. Um, but anyway, um, so Internet of Things, just all these different things, uh, ovens, microwaves, toasters, uh, are connecting uh, fridges to the internet so that when you, as you use things or, or something's being used, it can notify you. Maybe it can order things automatically for you. It, it, it's just amazing uh, what's going on right now with the Internet of Things. Um, and then serverless. We talked a little bit about this in the prior slide. Functions as a service, uh, lambdas. But they even have databases as a service. <laughs> you can actually use a database as a service. Um, uh, there's all sorts of things in the serverless area, storage as a service. Um, and then, of course, machine learning and artificial intelligence. One of the things that really holds people back from getting involved in machine learning and artificial intelligence is the sheer amount of, of, um, of hardware and stuff required to do some of these big things. And with cloud, uh, when you need it, you can just use it. And then you pay for what you use. Um, so it removes, uh, removes some of that. So, uh, we see a lot of the advantages of the cloud. When we look at these things that we're not doing now, maybe machine learning and artificial intelligence. And we realize that there's something we could be using there. Um, but it's not worth the cost to get into. Well, now we can just pay for what we use. Um, and then it is worth it. So uh, some of the cool benefits of the cloud is being able to do what you haven't been able to do before because it's been too costly um, to get started. It removes the upfront cost. So I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll be coming out uh, with videos hopefully regularly. I'm going to try and do them almost uh, one every weekday. Uh, on occasion, maybe more than one. Um, but uh, uh, we'll see. With the holidays... Um, since I'm doing this around Christmas time, uh, I'll probably miss a couple. But uh, anyway, have a good one.